Hi, in this session, we're going to talk about what is Docker, why should you care about it, and what makes it a really, really interesting proposition. And to begin with, to understand what containers are really, right? So before even we talk about Docker, we're going to understand what containers are, and then we're going to go into what is what makes it possible to run these containers and uh, what you know what is under the hood, what are the underlying technologies. We'll also going to look at the evolution of Docker. Now, to understand how containers work, we're going to start comparing it with something that we already know about. And those are physical servers and the virtual machines. Now, before we even get into that, let's look at why do we need this infrastructure that we provision either using physical servers or using virtual machines, right? The ultimate objective for us is not to just provision these servers and uh, do something with it. It's mainly because we want to run some applications. Now, those could be your web servers, databases, your ERP solutions. It could be anything that you want to uh, up run and any kind of application that you want to run, right? So it's the application that we want to run. And to run that application, we need an environment. And that is the reason why we provision this infrastructure. Now let's look at how do we go about doing that. And we're going to start talking about bare metals first. Bare metals, for, bare metal servers are the physical servers that we typically provision uh, to run our application. And the way we do that is we have some physical server, physical hardware, and uh, we're going to run the application. So application alone cannot run it. So you need some dependencies. You need some binaries, libraries, some you know operating system uh, to uh, the environment to run that application inside and along with. And that's where we install the application along with uh, the libraries, binaries, and the operating system. Now, for this operating system to utilize or to talk to the processor and to talk to the memory and utilize all these resources and devices, we need a kernel. And that's the core of the operating system. Why do we talk about kernel is because when we talk about container, the role of kernel is the foremost. And kernel is the interface between the operating system, the utilities that we have, and the underlying hardware that we provision, right? And that's what makes us our uh, physical server infrastructure. And what happens with physical server, though, is we typically over-provision and underutilize. So we do the capacity planning, and then we, you know, we think about uh, you know, the maximum capacity that we need, and we still keep some buffer, and then we go and provision or buy the hardware. And that's what we do, and then we start running the application. So if you look at the typical utilization of a bare metal server, it's about 12 to 15% on an average, and that's the underutilization part that we are talking about. Now, to overcome this underutilization and over-provisioning, what we came up with in 70s and 80s was the virtual machines. That was the beginning of the hypervisor and the virtual machines. Now, what do we do with hypervisors or virtual machines is, or how do we provision the virtual machines is we typically have a layer of hypervisor on top of our kernel and operating system, and that emulates the underlying hardware. The main responsibility of hypervisor is to emulate the hardware. And on top of that, we provision these virtual machines. And for each of this virtual machine, it appears as a new set of hardware. And that is the reason, if you look at the way a virtual machine is booted, it starts with a virtual BIOS. And then you load the master boot record, the MBR, uh, which then transfers the control to the kernel, or the bootloader, rather. And the bootloader calls the kernel. And then once we initialize the kernel is when we start with, let's say, initRD in case of Linux. And uh, then we start launching the processes, the initialization process. And uh, that's when, after that, we run our application. And that's the typical process of running a virtual machine. And for each of the virtual machine, the boot process follows the same steps. Now, how does this work with containers? And what makes containers a really interesting proposition is this. So when you talk about containers, we have the hardware, we have the operating system, we do have the kernel on that host operating system. But on top of that, 
instead of this hypervisor what we have is a thin layer of docker engine that's what we call as container or docker engine and that's the interface with or a wrapper on top of kernel which makes running these containers possible and each of this container does not emulate the hardware does not need a new set of hardware or it's not emulated at all uh, but what happens is you start running just the application along with its runtime environment in a isolated environment just like a virtual machine and that's what this contained environment or container or operating system level virtualization does what we call as containers and if you look at the boot process of a virtual machine and that's why we call containers to be lightweight what makes it lightweight is this so when you talk about vm we have this complete process to follow in order for booting your vm and then you launch your application in case of containers though you just launch your application and that's it along with its runtime environment there is no fluff of or there's no overhead of right rather booting or initializing and doing all these steps that we see on the left hand side with the vm and that's exactly what makes it lightweight and let's look at this in action so i'm going to launch a container in this environment and um, how do we launch a container is typically we have a concept of docker hub which is a registry which is similar to github and um, this is where you find this complete application along with the complete runtime environment that you need to launch a container now let's see what we want to launch today is um, i'm going to explore this a bit and um, i'll try to find the application that i want to launch in a contained environment let's find something which has a ui as well so let's say we want to set up jenkins and i am going to run it in an environment which is a cloud based environment this is typically a vm or a physical server looks like so if you are logged into a vm or a physical server and if you look inside that and if you look at the list of processes that it is running uh, running you will typically see this now this is my the actual physical host that's my mac uh, os and um, this is running all this initialization process and then a bunch of applications that i have uh, running on my host that's my physical server all right so we're going to launch this jenkins container and i have selected this image from docker hub and all i need to do is just copy this and paste it in the world of docker copy paste just works so let's paste it here and this is going to pull that complete runtime environment and going to launch my container what i call is container is what uh, is being launched here and it takes just about a second to actually launch it the rest of the time was spent in just pulling that image i can show you again so if you want to launch a container all you need to do is purely launch it this way and i'm just going to add few more options that's it so that's how long it takes to run a container and it should have already launched and should be running so if i look at uh, docker ps uh, i have a container with jenkins running already and i can look at the logs that it has started yes and i can browse to the ip address of my host and go to 8080 port so that's my jenkins ui it's ready to work now what is even more interesting and that's what we are comparing here is virtual machines versus uh, containers is if you look at the virtual machines that i have you'll see all these processes running so you boot the vm you load the kernel uh, it starts with the virtual bios as well it initializes all these processes before actually launching my application and your application generally is at the bottom part somewhere here now if you talk about containers it's just launched one process and if you want to see it's running on this vm actually it's a operating system level virtualization so it's running on this vm but it's just one or two processes that it runs so it's just the application along with its 
runtime environment and we can actually view this by connecting to that container now i'm inside the container and if you look at the processes that it is running it's just this much that's it and that's about it and that's the best part about containers and that's what makes containers really lightweight now if you want to compare containers with virtual machines versus bare metal this is the analogy that i typically use let's say you have um, about 1000 families that you want to accommodate and uh, what are the ways that you could do that right let's have a look at that so maybe the you can build independent houses or bungalows or you know uh, what not so what you what you get with independent houses is you have your own perimeter you have your own privacy maybe you can build a beautiful garden around it and uh, you have a complete you know level of isolation that you have however with independent houses are expensive to build they also take up a lot of resources so you are not utilizing the resources in the best manner and that's comparable to running bare metal servers the next approach could be building row houses where you have a series of houses which look identical you have common perimeter common security wall as well uh, you have a lot of common shared utilities at the same time you still get a lot of uh, privacy and isolation or level of isolation not as good as the bare metal or not good as in independent houses but you still have a level of isolation and that's what is comparable to virtual machines where you have better utilization at a lower cost and um, you're doing it in a sort of more effective way and when you talk about containers right so let's that i would compare that with something like apartments so in big cities you have you don't have a lot of space so you can best possibly accommodate more num most number of families in the best uh, most dense way is using apartments so apartments are cheaper apartments are economical um, however they you don't have the same amount of privacy as as in row houses or as in um, independent houses right and that's the analogy that i generally take to compare the bare metal versus the virtual machines versus the containers which offer you the best possible density in the most effective way at the lowest possible costs